feels like a ghost town out here. So let's look at this. Let's see, it says the owner closed on her lot in November 2021. The builder pulled the permits here three months later, and now three years later, this is all she has to show for it. And the building permit shows two contractors, Blackman Custom Builders, and Distinctive Homes and Development Group. And look at all these houses. There's one, two, three, four right here within just a few hundred yards. A homeowner bought this lot in 2019. And let's see here. And the first building permit was issued, uh, says there, December of 2019. And look, let's see who the contractors are. Yeah, listed Blackman Custom Builders and Distinctive Homes and Development Group. I mean, this house is still unfinished today. We first got out here to Lincoln County back in March when I got a tip that these property owners were blaming banks for letting construction loans extend years in some cases, and these homes were never finished. But the more we dug into what happened here in Lincoln County, the more we uncovered this wasn't just a banking problem. Something else much deeper was going on here. We are heading to uh, my property on Furnace Road Extension. When I first was looking at buying this property, these homes right here, starting here, this white one and this green one were, were just sitting half built, you know, with no windows. They've since been completed because another builder has come in and, and completed them, I think in the last month or so. Um, but then you can see there's two unfinished homes here that have been sitting for years. Last summer, Lisa LaBelle thought she'd found the perfect piece of Lincoln County. Okay, so this is my my house. Welcome to my home. LaBelle bought this lot an unfinished foundation from the Lyon Real Estate Group. Lyon's listing agent was Lincoln County Realtor Joy Cotto. So I am typing 1816 Furnace Road. This is Joy Cotto. This was the, the listing agent. This is Mario's wife, and she was the listing agent for this property. The realtor's husband, Mario Cotto, and his distinctive homes and development group was supposed to build LaBelle a custom home here. LaBelle says she wired Mario $150,000 to buy the land and a deposit on the build. Then weeks went by. The mailbox belonging to Mario Cotto is full. And LaBelle says Mario Cotto stopped communicating. Nothing had been done. Kept driving to the lot on the weekends. Nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. I'm, I'm finding this strange. I'm, I'm driving out there and I'm never seeing any type of work being done on any of the houses. And that was a red flag. I see all these half built houses. Why do I never see tradesmen? North Carolina. LaBelle started digging. I started pulling all of the lots in that whole subdivision. And as I'm pulling it, doing address after address, I'm seeing that the date that the houses were purchased and I'm having the horrific realization that none of the houses are done and it's dating back to like 2019, 2020. Lincoln County records show 14 properties in this subdivision were all owned by Mario Cotto's Lyon Real Estate Group and later sold to homeowners between 2020 and 2023. 11 of those 14 lots had building permits listing Jerome Blackman and Blackman Custom Builders as the original general contractor. Then last year, Mario Cotto transferred the permits to his distinctive homes and development group, where he's listed as a managing member along with Barbara. Norman, who is also the new general contractor he used to replace Blackman. The state's licensing board confirmed Mario Cotto is not a licensed GC. Only one of those 11 Lincolnton homes involving Mario Cotto and Jerome Blackman was ever finished. Yeah, so I have um, given Mr. Cotto $158,000 cash. Two months after closing, LaBelle says nothing happened at her lot. The contract with Mario and Distinctive Homes and Development Group shows he was supposed to finish the job in April. In between that time when I realized that something was terribly wrong, I reached out to this loan officer at Sri Lanka Credit Union, Sherry Visbeck, and, and expressed my concerns. Sherry Visbeck knew the Furnace Road Extension subdivision well. Nearly every land home deal the Cottos made there had a construction loan with Sherry Visbeck as the loan officer. Every homeowner we spoke to confirmed that fact and she said well let me let me reach out to him and I said Sherry do you know Mario do you have a personal relationship are you a relative like this is strange and she assured me that she wasn't and I said well nothing has happened at my house 
right? So this something is terribly wrong. LaBelle escalated her complaints at Truliant. So now he has $300,000 and I'm extremely concerned because the project hasn't started. And I emailed a disbursement agent at Truliant and said, "There's fraud. I think there's fraud going on here. I think I'm being, a fraud is being committed against me. And I knew that if I did that, you know, when you yell fraud at a bank, they have to investigate it. And, and that did work. And the next day after that conversation, framing started at my house. All of the wood was just the two days they were here in November of 2023. LaBelle did not stop there. She filed multiple complaints with state and federal agencies, including North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein's office. Dear sir, the Consumer Protection Division has written you twice regarding Miss Lisa LaBelle's complaint. We have yet to receive a response stating your position. The AG's office sent letters, but Mario Cotto never responded. Instead of pushing harder, Stein's office closed its investigation. But you got a letter from the AG's office and it essentially said because we could not contact the person you were filing the complaints on, there's nothing we can do, we gave up? Correct. What do you think about that? It's horrifying. I, I, I was shocked. In my opinion, it's a, it's a useless process if that's the outcome. In February, Lisa LaBelle filed a criminal fraud complaint against Mario Cotto with the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office. LaBelle says since then, she's heard nothing and asked us to help. Yeah, this would have been the front door. Lisa LaBelle now has a mortgage payment for a home she will never live in. I've lost my life savings on this transaction. I, I have to make a decision to to foreclose on the loan. The day we shot this interview, she got that foreclosure letter from True Lyant. Lisa LaBelle blames her bank for this. Each lot tells a story, and I, I know a lot of the homeowners because um, I've, I've talked to them and tried to rally the troops to do something about this, about Mario Cotto. Coming up. If you've had the opportunity to stand in a room with him man to man, what would you say to him today? Why did you hurt my wife? You broke her heart. And I saw what he put her through. There are a lot of people who say you have built them out of their life savings and retirement. You need to dive a little bit deeper into the true story. That's why I'm here, man. When unfinished business continues for this. One of the first things I did with this investigation was to find every piece of land connected to Joy and Mario Cotto. I found a second subdivision with about a dozen lots on Churchill Lane up near the town of Maiden. This unfinished house was the first thing I noticed when I got out here. And you could tell it's been sitting unfinished for a long time. The permit was issued in September of 2019. Contractor Distinctive Homes and Development Group, along with Blackman Custom Builders, and according to this building permit, the last inspection last year. These two lots also involved the Lion Real Estate Group and Mario Cotto. But when I first made the trip out here a few months ago, these homes looked a lot like the one we just looked at right around the corner. He was trying, he was trying to draw trying to money job. after he knew there was a lien on funds on my right. home and he knew I was served with paperwork from the sheriff's office and I was being sued and held accountable for the people he didn't pay. And then he tried to, tried to take a draw after that. More than three years ago, Jim and Dana Bonanno thought they'd found the home they'd spend the rest of their lives in. That's gorgeous. Right there. But as soon as the Bonanos bought the lot from Joy and Mario Cotto and signed the new home construction contract, the trouble started. We closed December. November 2021, he didn't break ground until November of 2022 and then did nothing until we had sticks and bricks in April of 2023. My wife used to drive by the house crying. She would uh, film the house and said, nothing's been done. Another six months, it's the same. And she cried because, I mean, it means everything to a woman. It's her, it's her house. And she would cry and it would break my heart to see that. And I... I tried to say it'll be okay, he'll get it done, but in, I knew, I knew that uh, we had somebody that was going to take us for a ride and hurt us. If you had the opportunity hmm, to stand in a room with him and the man, what would you say? Be nice. I, I will be. Uh, why did you hurt my wife? She broke her heart. She broke her heart. And I saw what he put her through. And I couldn't cry. I had to be very strong for her. Uh, I would tell him that uh, you'll have to answer to somebody. 
Blackman Custom Builders was the Bonanno's original contractor. Then last year, three years into the build, Mario Cotto's distinctive homes and development group took over. Even with all these delays, we were giving him the benefit of the doubt because Mario was very good at just giving you enough to keep you there and giving you enough for him to be able to take the draws from the bank and do what he wanted with those draws, which many of the people that were affected don't know what he did with those draws. Banks typically release payments, known as draws, to builders after an inspection to confirm the construction is progressing and subcontractors are being paid. The Bonanos say there's no way that happened in the draws. Citizens Bank paid to Mario Cotto from their loan. The builder was actually able to get draws without building materials being here. So we were wondering why that was taking place, because that's not the way it goes. Look at your, uh... In November, a deputy served the Bananos with a $16,000 lien from a building supplier who claims it was never paid for custom windows ordered for the home. The Bananos immediately fired Mario Cotto. Most of the stuff outside has already been covered. And hired Jeff Jimenez to finish the job. What is the total of bait draws that Mario Cotto made on your mortgage? $147,000. That is correct. That we replaced our builder. And I seen what, what was done to the house, and uh, the homeowner told me what Mario Cotto has would draw from the loan itself. There was not that much work done for that amount of money that he would draw. When Jeff Jimenez showed up to the Bonanno's unfinished home in January, this is what he found. A framed house with a roof and no windows. Jimenez says he later found out Cotto purchased windows and took a bank draw for them, but they were nowhere to be found. From what I understood, uh, Mario got a draw and he told him that the windows were here. So the bank never checked after him or before they released the funds, he'd got like $16,000 for the windows and the doors. <clears throat> and there was no windows and doors installed. We found the original window order still sitting at this builder supply yard in Newton. The Bonanos also blame Citizens Bank. In their subdivision, five unfinished homes all carry a Citizens Bank construction loan. But things went south really quickly because the bank had very poor oversight in the beginning. Did Citizens Bank do enough to protect you guys? No. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. I asked Citizens Bank, Truliant Federal Credit Union, and Sherry Visbeck how this happened. Visbeck left Citizens and now works for Truliant, but that bank wouldn't talk about any of this with us, and Visbeck never responded to our requests. Citizens Bank sent a statement admitting the bank knew about those unfinished homes in Lincoln County and suspended draws on those loans, but the bank claims the blame for what happened here lies with these homeowners, writing, Citizens hires and Inspectors to confirm a level of work was completed. Our agreement and disclosures clearly state that the borrower is responsible for monitoring work progress. On the inside, it was it was turning, it was starting to turn black. The Bonanno's home was supposed to be finished two years ago. Jeff Jimenez will finish the job next month. There's got to be a stopping point, and this is, has to be a stopping point. We cannot have someone like him continue doing this to us homeowners and us builders because now nobody trusts nobody. My wife and I live in a 10 by 12 room with everything we own in a loft above us, waiting for our home to be finished. But I know it personally costs us easily over 100,000 out of our own pocket to finish our dream home that became a nightmare. Coming up. These were the ones that I was supposed to be getting involved with that never did. Why are these houses not finished today? Right, I'm all set. When unfinished business continues after the break. We are turning on the Mountain Creek Avenue here in Denver. I'm looking for a woman named Barbara Norman. When Mario Cotto and Jerome Blackman split in 2023, Mario Cotto needed a new general contractor. And he found that in a woman named Barbara Norman, a businesswoman who's now caught in the middle of all this. Okay. All right, here we go. Miss Norman. Yes. Hey, I'm Jody Barr. Hey. Queen City News. Good to meet you. Of all the people connected to Mario and Joy Cotto, only Barbara Norman agreed to talk with us. Why would somebody not turn this to paperwork? I kept saying, you got too much on your plate. Give it to me. 
I do paperwork all the time. Norman and Mario Cotto went into business in 2022, where she later became a managing member of Mario's Distinctive Homes and Development Group. How did you get into business with Mario Cotto? I have my own insurance agency and I wrote um, insurance on his business and uh, he found out that I was a general contractor and uh, we started talking about going into business together, starting a new business. I was going to be the general contractor, I was going to pull um, the permit and do the paperwork and I got one percent of the value of the home. Did he pay you? One home. Out of how many? Probably 10 or 15. This was lot 21 Clarks Creek. He paid me $3,350 on 11 14 22. A piece of land that nearly two years later looks like this. Yeah, those are the ones that I started. So you kept meticulous records on what you did together? Well, these are the ones I started. I never got anything back. I mean, I just kept telling him I need the contracts and all this stuff. Did you have any idea what was in Mario's history with regards to some of these properties here in Lincoln County? I did not. Lot 2, Clarks Creek, 1075 Belmont, 3812 Churchill Lane, Lot 7, Jonathan's Walk. These were the ones that I was supposed to be getting involved with that never did. Like I said, I set up the books and had all the different pages that I wanted to fill in. And then, as you can see, all the other ones are blank because I was never involved with anything after that. Do you think that had you been allowed to do your work on these jobs that fewer people would have been negatively impacted? Oh, without a doubt. I would have pulled the plug way quicker because, once again, where's the money going? I mean, I wanted to do the accounting, and he kept taking, would not give me the accounting or the paperwork, and that always gives me a red flag if you can't share the paperwork. Numbers are numbers. Give me the numbers. He wouldn't do it. Norman says she knew back then there were unfinished homes in Mario's past. All that was before me. And he only explained to me that the other contractor was the one that was at fault. He was not at fault, but the other contractor was, and he was the one that was taking the money, and he was the one that did not finish the homes. So Mario Cotto explained to you the problems depicted on these lots were the fault of Jerome Blackman. Yes, but I mean, once again, I never saw all this stuff. I, I, we went to one subdivision with a few homes that was almost done, and he said Jerome was going to finish those, and the empty lots would be the ones we was going to do. But that never happened. Not to my knowledge, I didn't pull a permit. In March, Barbara Norman found out about her business partner's troubles. I haven't pulled any contracts, but people are calling me, telling me that their home is under the new business. And I've never met him and I've never pulled a contract, not one. I keep getting more lawsuits, so I'm not sure. And it's like almost every day I get something, or at least once a week. And I just make copies of them, send it to Mario and tell him, he needs to get over here and take care of it. County building permits show Norman's name on 12 permits. She assumes Mario Cotto got those permits and used her for her GC license the whole time. Norman was named in a complaint filed by a homeowner with the state GC licensing board in March. This is where I voluntarily surrendered my license um, because I no longer wanted to be involved. When I got my complaint from the licensing board, I told them, uh, I am done, get my name off of that, and they walked me through how to do that. So I'm no longer a qualifier for them. And that was a decision you made? Absolutely. Closed the business. But in May, Mario filed this 2024 Distinctive Homes LLC report with the Secretary of State, listing Norman as a managing member two months after she formally severed their business relationship. Norman also identified another person involved in the Cotto network. Hello. Hello, is this Mo? Yeah, this is Mo. Who is this? This is Jody Barr with Queen City News. The investor, whose name was Mo, I don't have his information, so. Mo's real name is Paratha Zethel Mohanan, who wouldn't interview on camera, but talk to us by phone. I'm an old man living alone, 81 years old. Please leave me alone. This is your opportunity, so you could take it or leave it, but I'd much rather you take it because I think you could help educate the public on what your role is in this. I'm not an educator. I'm not interested in any of these things. And I will, uh, if you put any anywhere my name, this I will repeat because I'm recording this. Okay, good. I am too. Okay. So the... We found multiple businesses tied to Mo and the Cottos, Jim's Real Estate, DeNova Homes, and at one point, Mo was a managing member of Distinctive Homes and Development Group. 
Joey Cotto was a realtor with EXP Realty and the listing agent for the Lion Real Estate Group and Distinctive Homes and Development Group. Her husband, Mario, is a managing member of Distinctive Homes and used Jerome Blackman as his GC. Blackman owns Blackman Custom Builders and DeNovo Homes. Blackman and Mario split. After the split, Mario went into business with Barbara Norman, who became his new general contractor. Let's call the Cottos. Hello? Hey, is this a Joey Cotto? Yes. I was calling to see if uh, if you all would interview with us about uh, what's been going on with some of those homes. Uh, my husband might, because I was just I was just a realtor involved. Okay. So all I would be able to talk about was putting them on the market and then going to closing with them. No. That's where mine ends. <laughs> okay. Joey Cotto admitted she represented both the land seller and her husband's construction company. Mario never returned our call and neither Cotto scheduled an interview. Unfinished business continues after this. Ladies and gentlemen, I now call this hearing to order. Present at this hearing, Lisa LaBelle, the complainant in this matter, also present at this hearing, is Joy Cotto, the respondent, Philip Black, her broker in charge, and her witness, Mario Cotto. Do you affirm that the testimony you are about to give in this proceeding shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. You know, this wood's been sitting here since November. Lisa LaBelle, who says the Cottos took $300,000 from her, believed Joy Cotto knew about the delays with the other homes involving her husband, but hid that from LaBelle at closing. I'm Joy Cotto. I work with the EXP Realty. LaBelle filed an ethics complaint against Joy with the Canopy Realtor Association, based in Charlotte. Mario and Joy Cotto have $314,000 cash for me, and as I sit here before you today, the property is exactly as it was when I purchased it, except two days of work that has rotted framing and must be ripped out. Joy Cotto admitted she was the realtor for her husband's Lion Real Estate Group on the land sale and represented distinctive homes on the home sale and disclosed that to LaBelle. Joy testified she had no formal involvement in either Blackman Custom Builders or her husband's distinctive homes. Are they two distinct entities, distinctive homes and Jerome Blackman Builders? Two different entities. Okay. So performance by Jerome Blackman Builders on other projects has nothing to do in your mind then, does it? as to how distinctive homes may perform. Right. Okay. We had a new GC on the job. So I knew the old GC with all the delays. He wasn't in the picture. So I didn't see anything that would cause her to be delayed. Joy side argued since Blackman's firm was to blame for the unfinished homes, she had no obligation to tell LaBelle what she knew about those unfinished homes since her husband's new company was building LaBelle's home. Can you give me an example of when uh, your distinctive homes, homes and development finished a home um, with the uh, stated con um, date on the contract? No, you were going to be the first. My last question is knowing now that um, my home is in default um, and I've lost $323,000, do you feel like you still earn the commission now that I don't have a house and uh, my credit's going to be annoying? You do. Okay. Because you terminated your contract without waiting to see if the builder completed that home, which he could have completed it. You didn't give him that opportunity. We asked Jerome Blackman for an interview, but he refused multiple requests. Blackman says he and Mario split in 2022. Blackman's attorney wrote us saying Blackman denies he was to blame for the delays in construction and denies all claims of wrongdoing related to funds for any of the home builds. The attorney added, Mr. Blackman will be pursuing legal action against Mario Cotto for the damages he has caused to Mr. Blackman and his reputation. The ethics panel filed an ethics violation against Joy Cotto, finding she misrepresented and or concealed pertinent information from LaBelle and that Cotto knew the other homes she sold were not actively under construction. Canopy recommended a $3,000 fine and ordered Cotto to take a four-hour ethics course. All right. Joy and Mario Cotto are here on the porch. Let's go pull up. We found the Cottos at home to question them about the allegations against them. Would you just take a second to speak with us about what's going on here? I'm not interested. We, we send messages to you guys as well. Right. Well, we haven't got an answer from you. There are a lot of people who say you have built them out of their life savings and retirement. You need to dive a little bit deeper into the true story. That's why I'm here, man. 
I have no interest on providing any statement. Right now. A lot of people are going to see this report. Absolutely. Absolutely. If folks want to claim that I've robbed them, dive deeper into where this all started pre-COVID, through COVID. You're not getting the stories where I paid folks rents for over a year. I both paid folks extensions for their banks was that for over a year. Was Corey Williams one of those? A, a lot of them. He I'm told not, you I'm didn't not, pay. I'm not, gi I'm not giving any answers as to who. I've spent over $20,000 per client okay, throughout their vote process. So if they want to see if you look, he's the only one that can drive. How about Barbara Norman? Were you using her for her GC license? I'm, look, I'm, I'm back. I've claimed, I told you I'm not going to make any statements. I don't agree to you using this on, on air for anything. But this is the only way that we could get your side. So I'm trying, I'm trying to be real cordial with you. I you're, too. A, you're a third party to this. But again, I'm not going to sit. It's been going on for a long time with folks are claiming things that are not true. And I'm not going to sit here and have to defend myself. Those folks should speak what's true. Their whole stories are, it's not the truth. Are you understanding that? What they're claiming is not true. A lot of them have told us that they have wired you money and they have Foundation City with unfinished houses on them. That is incorrect. Has any of them told you that I've completed foundations and never got paid for them? Come on. So again, I'm not going to say, if this is a he said, she said thing, I'm not. Okay. Well, sir. how about the Bonanos? They say you took bank draws on their property. For, the, for example, listen, 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 listen and see if this makes any sense. Okay. The type of loans that are used are construction and loans. The only time funds can be released is for work that I have completed and I am owed money for. The bank sends out an inspector, they inspect, yes, the work is complete. Here you go, we're reimbursing you for the for what you've done. So how would it make any sense in the world that I'm taking draws from anybody's banks for work that I did not do? If the bank has to inspect and say, Mr. Client, here's all the information, this work is complete, we're about to release this draw and the client has to approve it. Does that make any sense? So you're saying the work was done, you got those bank draws. Absolutely. Any completed. draw any draw that was received was work completed. Why are these houses not finished today? Right, I'm all set. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. We need to continue to shine a light. Remember the complaint Lisa LaBelle filed with AG Josh Stein's office? The one Stein's office dismissed after Mario Cotto wouldn't answer the AG's letters. We asked Stein's press office for an interview about what we uncovered here and invited the AG out to Lincoln County to show him what we found. The AG's office would not even make time for a phone call. We found the AG at a public event in Charlotte a few days ago. Why would your office not entertain to hear more information about that? Well, we absolutely welcome complaints from consumers across the state. I encourage anybody who's had experience, whether it's with this builder or someone else, to file a complaint with our office. There was a complaint filed and it, on May 9th. Your office wrote back, because his business failed to respond, your office was closing that complaint. Why stop there? Well, we can't act and bring a lawsuit for every single complaint. So what we do is when we get a package of complaints where there's a pattern or practice where it's clear that there are a lot of people uh, who have been affected, that's when we can take the next step. Guys, one so one, is it enough? Now, I wish we could, but we get 16,000 to 20,000 complaints every year, and we don't have lawyers to bring 16,000 lawsuits. We have to be very uh, selective. Are you interested in looking at these properties while you're here on I, I wish I had time. I'm all over the place. But thank you. Unfinished business continues after the break. Troubles for the Cottos continue to mount tonight. I confirm with Joy Cotto's broker in charge, Philip Black, that Cotto is no longer affiliated with EXP Realty. Black would not tell me whether that separation was Joy's decision or EXP's. The North Carolina Real Estate Commission opened an investigation into Joy Cotto last month from a complaint filed by Lisa LaBelle. I found multiple judgments and lawsuits against the Cottos and their businesses from homeowners and subcontractors in Lincoln, Mecklenburg, and a brand new one from Burke County entered just last month, but those judgments will likely never be paid because of this. It's a $700,000 judgment filed in Catawba County in 2019 out of Puerto Rico against Mario Cotto over a failed hotel deal there. It's the first judgment we found against him in North Carolina, which means this would have to be paid off before any of these homeowners see a penny from those more recent judgments. Although the state AG took no interest in sorting 
reporting this out, I've confirmed the district attorney in Lincoln County is working a criminal investigation into this, but we do not have a timeline on when that might finish. I'm Jody Barr. Thank you for watching this Queen City News investigation.